Quick update on the bending situation. I did get a response from another RV8 builder who is much, much further along than I am, like years further along. And what he told me was that um, when you're done bending this thing, it should almost rest at that angle with almost no force holding it down. So I'm just gonna take my time and work it slowly. You really do have to put a lot of leverage, um, apply a lot of force to this thing to get it to go. So I'm just gonna do it in small increments. Um, if you're wondering what this monstrosity is right here, this is for the outboard end of the elevator. It is, um, like the end rib, it's a couple of ribs actually made it together. Um, and then this strap that still has the blue on it to hold this counterweight right here. Um, so that was a bit of work to get that in there and assembled and there's still more work to do. The whole point of putting this all together is so that I can um, match drill these holes here to go all the way through that piece of lead and then into the flange. There's one on each side from these, these two uh, made it up spars, counterweight spar and, and spar. Anyways, so that seems tricky and it's not a small hole. It's a, this is pre-punched at like a number 40, um, but the hole is a number 12, so it's going to be quite a bit bigger and my biggest concern is making sure that I drill a really straight hole so that it doesn't come out some weird angle and punch through, you know, too near the edge of the flange or too near to the web, you know, still centered because that's ultimately going to hold a bolt. Anyways, that's something that I was messing with last night while I was kind of waiting to get an answer on what to do about that bending thing. So I'll set this aside um, today. It's middle of the afternoon. I've been building furniture in my mostly unfurnished house. Um, so I'll just work on this bend for now. And then if I'm feeling confident, I'll go ahead and drill that thing out. Let's take a look at Van's plans uh, regarding folding trailing edges and how to make the bending break. You can see that this is different than the way that I did mine in that in this case, the boards are sort of flat and they squish the piece together. Whereas the one that I did, um, I put the boards together in a vertical orientation. Uh, something that I picked up from uh, looking at another builder's uh, build log and he described this as, um, an easier way to do it because it allowed you to create a bit more torque. Um, so this is not the end of the bending of the elevators here. I worked with this a lot um, on this particular day. Um, and I'll give an update on that later in this video, but uh, it will continue uh, the next day in the following video with the satisfactory result. Um, the problem being that I just couldn't quite get even though it, you see it squishing all the way down, I couldn't get the inside radius where it needed to be. Moving on to drilling the counterweight, um, dropping it down in here so I can hopefully kind of get a vertical um, hole drilled using the holes in the um, counterbalance skin. I have to go back and forth between a couple of drills because as I'm drilling, that bit would just get stuck in and stuck. And uh, my electric drill can at least a try to reverse out a little bit. I'll give a little bit more detailed um, description of how this went and why I had to jump back and forth as much as I did. But um, we did eventually get through it and everything turned out okay, but drilling through lead is not easy. You see how quickly that uh, bit just gets sucked down and stuck in there. So here's an update. So uh, what I ended up doing with this was um, I sort of dropped it in between these two tables and used some one by twos to uh, hold it up kind of where these Clecos are, where my 
uh, thumb and forefinger are, and then uh, used a clamp to hold that whole thing together so that it was solid and wouldn't move and it was more or less vertical. And then um, I guess if you don't do this, um, the way that you determine if you're, if you're holding the drill um, perpendicular to the surface that you're drilling is um, the re reflection uh, in this aluminum will basically look like your drill bit is one really long straight drill bit. If you see any bend in that reflection, then you're not vertical. And so that's why I peeled um, the, the blue vinyl off of here so I could get a good look at that. Uh, the instructions are pretty uh, specific about making sure that you use a lube when drilling through the lead. And uh, you can see that I have two drills out here because the air drill would get going and the bit, I, I basically drilled pilot holes all the way through with the number 40, but the drill bit will load up really quickly with these long uh, curly pieces of lead filling up the, the flutes of the drill bit and it will bind up really quickly. So <clears throat> the air drill doesn't reverse so what I would have to do was uh, get the key out and pop it, pop the drill off of the bit and then grab this drill here and get it on there and, and carefully reverse the, the bit out. So anyways, uh, it was generally um, successful. You can see that here on the the end rib, this is, there are two ribs sandwiched together. There's th this end rib here. And then on this side, and it's shorter, is what's called the, the counterweight rib. And so these two things are sandwiched together. Um, and so this would be the outboard portion. Anyways, uh, this work, this came out pretty well. Like it, uh, a good location, so I was able to drill nice and straight, dropping down through. I'd hope that maybe that I could uh, rig this to drill it with a drill press, but this piece is so long, there's no way uh, you could get, not even close <laughs> with that, even with that shelf all the way, the shelf would have to be like down there uh, to make room for it. So, um, however, on this side of it, 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 the pilot hole seemed good, but once I upsized it to the number 12, you could see that it wasn't completely straight and it um, is pretty close, it's hard to tell from this angle, but th this hole's about an eighth inch. There we go. It's about an eighth inch from the web of the rib here. Um, I sent a message to Van's uh, support to ask them um, if this is a part that I need to redo. It may not be. Um, I checked it with the bolt through there there's still, with the bolt coming up through there, there's still room for the nut to cleanly fit in that space on the flange. The washer, however, um, is a little bit wider than the nut. And if, in order for the washer to work, you'd have to like flatten one side of the washer so that it's not completely round so that it could butt up against the flange or near the flange. So anyways, I'm gonna, I've sent them a picture of that and I'll talk to them and find out what they say. Um, the engineers over there will let me know if I need to redo it or if flattening the washer is the way to go. So we'll keep you posted. Oh, the bending. Did the bending. Um, there it is. It's not, it doesn't rest completely. Uh, it, but the, this is, this is where it's at. That's where it will be. And you can see it doesn't take a lot of pressure to get there anywhere along the length of this thing. So I decided I'm pretty happy with this right now. Once it all gets um, clicoed onto the skeleton, we'll see if it, uh, if it bows out at all, which would indicate that it's underbent. And at that time I can do a little bit more fine tuning of the bend if I want to. Anyways, back at it. <laughs>